This video is brought to you by Ultium 365. In today's episode, you will learn how to make this Arduino development board at home. This Arduino development board has a 5V and 3M power supply, an I2C supported OLED display module, 5V SPDD type relays, a LoRa transceiver module for long range wireless communication, and a 5V buzzer. You may have seen this development board being used in most of my videos. It is good for basic prototyping and I have made several projects using this development board. But there comes a time when you feel the need to advance a little. The basic objective behind using a development board is to save time and money. A development board should have enough power so that you can easily test different projects with it. I replaced this development board because it is based on the 705 voltage regulator and as you know it can handle a maximum current of 1 amps if a good heatsink is used. So if you use a 705 voltage regulator you can easily power up small sensors but when it comes to servo motors, GSM modules or HMI screens that require more current the 705 voltage regulator fails badly. Then you have to use an external power supply. Some time ago I made a 5V and 3M power supply that I have used with almost all controller boards. I used it to power up my portable monitor, motors, sensors and even I have used it to charge my cell phone. When I was 100% satisfied with this 5V power supply, I thought why not update my development board. And as you can see, here is my updated development board based on the regulated 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. I've also used an OLED display module in this development board, which helps you monitor values of different sensors. The display I used here is the SSD1306 OLED display module. In this development board, I have also added 5 volt SPRT type relays, which allow you to control high voltage AC and DC loads. And as you can see, there is also a buzzer on this board. Let's say you are working on a project where you need to monitor different types of sensors. When the sensor value exceeds the threshold value the buzzer turns on, or if you want to create a security system and the sensor gets activated, the buzzer turns on. In addition to that, I have also added a LoRa transceiver module in this development board because I'm sure that after trying out basic Arduino projects you will eventually need long range wireless communication. I have used the AI Thinker 433 MHz R8-02 LoRa module. I'm really thankful to AI Thinker for sending me lots of these LoRa modules along with different antennas for testing the communication range. And to connect other sensors and breakout boards I have also added headers. I have also added headers for 3.3V, 5V and ground connections. Let's say you need to power up a servo or a GSM module, you can connect the 5V from here. I have given a full overview of the Arduino development board and now let's move on and take a look at its circuit diagram. I've used Ultim Designer for creating the schematic and for designing the PCB. If you want to speed up and professionalize your PCB designing work, I recommend shifting to Ultim Designer. I've added the trial link in the description below. One of the best things about Ultium Designer is that you can share your designs with your team members using Ultium 365. They can check your design, leave comments and if there are any issues, they can fix them from anywhere in the world. Ultium Designer also uses the world's fastest component search engine, Octopod, so you won't have any difficulty in searching for components. I have already explained in detail how to search for components and how to create a schematic and design a PCB using Ultium Designer. I have added the links in the description. This is the LoRa R8-02433 MHz transceiver module and its NSS, SCK, MOSI and MISO pins are connected to Arduino pins 10, 13, 11 and 12. The reset pin of the LoRa module is connected to the Arduino pin 9 and its 3.3 volt and ground pins are connected to the Arduino 3.3 volt and ground pins. And don't forget to add these 22 microfarad and 0.1 microfarad decoupling capacitors. A 5 volt buzzer is connected to the Arduino pin D8 and I'm using 2N2222 NPN transistor for controlling this buzzer. Connect the positive pin of the buzzer to the 5 volt which is VN and connect the ground pin of the buzzer to the collector of 2N2222 NPN transistor Connect emitter to the ground and connect the base to the digital pin D8 through this 10 kilo ohm resistor. Four relays are connected to the Arduino digital pins 4, 5, 6 and 7. 
connections of all the relays are same. The type of relays I'm using are SPDT and these are 5 volt relays. I'm using the same transistor 2N2222. You might be thinking why am I using 2N2222 NPN transistor. So if you want to know why am I using this transistor and how to perform the calculations then you should watch my video on different types of relays and how to use them. Anyway, there is a freewheeling diode connected across the coil pins used against big EMF protection. And this is a terminal block for connecting AC or DC loads. This is a 5V in 3 amps power supply based on the MP1584EN. I have already explained this in my previous video. In that video, I have also explained how to get different voltages at the output. The ground and VCC pins of the SD1306 or LED display module are connected to the Arduino ground and 3.3 volt. Whereas the SCL and SDA pins of the OLED display module are connected to Arduino A5 and A4 pins. A5 is the SCL and A4 is the SDA. And these are the female headers. So that's all about the connections. You can download this complete circuit diagram from our website electronicclinic.com. Anyway, after creating the schematic, then I switched over to the PCB designing document. I defined the PCB board size and rearranged all the components. Using Ultim Designer, you can automatically route all the wires. Finally, before generating the Gerber files, I activated the 3D layout mode by pressing number 3 on the keyboard. I double checked all the connections and once satisfied, I again activated the 2D layout mode by pressing number 2 on the keyboard. Finally, I was ready to generate the Gerber files. Next, we will generate the NC drill files. Now, I have the PCB Gerber files and the NC drill files. Right click on the project name and select Explore. This will open the project folder. Open the project outputs folder. Now, these are the output files that we need to send to the PCB manufacturing company. Now, to confirm that everything is done correctly, you can use the PCBA Online Gerber Weaver. Drag and drop all the files. You can check all the individual layers. And once satisfied, then you can click on the Git and Instant PCB code. Click on the Add Gerber File button and select the folder. It automatically detects the number of layers and port size. Next, you can select the number of PCBs you want to order. You can change the PCB color and all the other parameters as per your needs. In my case, I'm going to go with the default values and I'm going to select the SMT stencil. Finally, click on the Save to Cart button. For the component sourcing, you will need BOM or Bill of Materials, which you can generate in just a few seconds. Simply go to Reports menu and click on Bill of Materials. Ultim Designer will generate a complete BOM file for you. Click on the Preview button. Save this file and send it to a distributor and they will arrange all the components for you. In my case, I send my BOM file to SunFounder and AI Thinker. I'm really thankful to SunFounder and AI Thinker for sponsoring all these tiny SMD and through hole components. I've added links in the description if you want to check their products. And these are the PCBs I received from PCBWay. As you can see, the quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the solder mask looks amazing. And here is the SMT stencil. Now that I have all the required components, PCBs and tools, so let's go ahead and apply solder paste on this PCB. This is the most important step and you need to be very careful if you want clean and professional finishing. You can watch my video on SMD soldering for beginners. And in that video, I have explained how to apply solder with and without using an SMT stencil, how to place SMD components, 
what is the recommended airflow speed and temperature that video will really help you in getting started with SMD component soldering The soldering is completed and it looks good. Anyway, I used my digital multimeter to check for any short circuits and I also checked the continuity. I double checked all the connections using my and Star digital microscope. My Arduino development board is ready. But before I insert the Arduino Nano and OLED display module into these female headers, first I'm going to check the power supply voltage. The voltage is ok and now I can use the Arduino and OLED display module. So this is the final look of my designed Arduino development board. Now let's go ahead and check if all the components on this development board are working. For testing this board I have connected a potential meter with the analog pin A0 of the Arduino. I am going to print its value on the OLED display module and when the value is going to exceed a certain threshold value the buzzer will turn on and the 220 volt AC bulb connected to the relay will also turn on. I have written this simple program for testing all the components. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch my designed Arduino development board in action. I am going to power up my Arduino development board using this 12 volt DC adopter. You can see everything is working exceptionally well. I can also use my 4S lithium ion battery with this development board. The power supply on this development board accepts wide range of input voltages between 7 and 28 volts. And by the way, in my upcoming video, I will check the LoRa and its communication range using these different types of antennas. So consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.